Given a function or relation, it's useful to define the following. We define the domain of a function or relation as a set of all possible input values. On the other hand, the range of a function or relation is a set of all possible output values. For example, let x be the length of one side of a square and a the area of a square. Using x as input and a as output, is a a function of x? And what is the domain and range of the relation? To determine whether a is a function of x, we need to decide whether any given input x produces a unique output a. So let's think about that. Now, it will be convenient to express this relationship as an algebraic equation if we can do that. So the relationship between the area of a square and its side length is going to be a equals x squared. And the advantage to algebra is the following. If we have a specific value of x, we're going to find the area by finding x squared. But since this is just an arithmetic formula, there's only one possible value for x squared. And so given any value of x, there is one and only one possible value for x squared. So a is a function of x. How about the domain and range? Since the length of one side of a square could be any positive real number, the domain is all positive real numbers. Since these are inputs, we write this as x greater than 0. Now at this point we do something that seems a little strange. Uh, this is based on the following idea. Strict inequalities are sometimes difficult to work with. So we often allow equality provided the algebraic expression allows it. In this particular case, since we can find x squared even if x is equal to 0, we'll allow our domain to be x greater than or equal to 0. How about the range? If x is a non-negative real number, then x squared is also a non-negative real number. Well, since x squared is the area, and the area is the output, that means the range is all non-negative real numbers. And so the range is a greater than or equal to 0. Now, we could represent a function or a relation in terms of an equation. But sometimes that's not always possible. And so there are two other ways that we represent functions and relations. One is through set notation. We could represent functions and relations by giving a list of ordered pairs. For example, if we do this, we use the following convention. Suppose x, y is one of the ordered pairs in a function or relation. Then x, our first value, is read as the input value, and y, our second value, is read as the output value. For example, suppose I have a function or a relation given by this. Let's find the output for an input value of 2, the input required to obtain an output value of 4, and the output for an input value of 6. So if we want the output for an input of 2, then we want to find an ordered pair where the first term is 2. So we'll look at our ordered pairs, and we'll try to find one with first term 2. And that's this one. So our input value of 2 has output value of 5. What if we want to get an output value of 4? If we want an output value 4, we look for an ordered pair where the second term is 4. So we'll look and find this one, negative 3, 4. And so our input value of negative 3 will give an output value 4. But wait, there's more. We have a second ordered pair with an output value of 4, this one, 5, 4. And so we might add that the input value 5 will also give an output value 4. 
And finally, if we want the output for an input value of 6, we look for an ordered pair where the first term is 6. And it's this. No, not that. This. No, not that. Um, there isn't one. And it's important to realize we can't just make up facts. If there isn't an ordered pair with input value 6, we have to say that the relation is undefined for the input value 6. If we have a function or relation given as a list of ordered pairs, we can find the domain and range and then decide whether or not we have a function. So remember the domain is the set of all possible input values and as ordered pairs, the inputs are the first entries of all the ordered pairs. So the domain will be the set of all the first entries. So our first entries are 1, 2, negative 3, and 1, but we've already listed 1, and so we don't list any element twice. So our domain is just going to be 1, 2, negative 3. Remember, the range is the set of all possible output values, and so if we're given a list of ordered pairs, the outputs are the second entries of all the ordered pairs. And so the range is going to be 3, 5, 4, and 7. Now to determine if f is a function, we check to see if any input has more than one output. So remember, the inputs are the first terms in all of the ordered pairs, and the thing to notice here is the input 1 appears in two ordered pairs, 1, 3, and 1, 7. But they have different outputs. And so we might say the following, since the input 1 has two possible outputs, 3 and 7, this is not a function. One other thing we could do is we might also graph a relation. And since the points on a graph correspond to ordered pairs x, y, then our input will be all possible x values and the output will be all possible y values. So for example, suppose we have a graph. So let's see if we can determine the domain and range. So remember the domain is the set of all possible input values. That's the set of all possible x values. And our range is the set of all possible output values, which is to say the set of all possible y values. And so it will help to identify the least and greatest values of x and y. So the leftmost point has x coordinate minus 3. That's because we could read the coordinates of this point as minus 3, 1. Meanwhile, the rightmost point has x coordinate 2, because the coordinates of this point are 2, 2. And all points in between have an x coordinate between minus 3 and 2, without exception. And so that means the domain our possible x values is going to be negative 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. Meanwhile, the lowest point on the graph has y coordinate minus 1. And the highest point has y coordinate 5. And so that means our range is minus 1 to 5. 